My name is uh, Maria Pizzuti. I'm Italian, originally from Rome, and I moved to Ireland uh, 30 years ago. And uh, and then uh, around 13 years ago, we, my husband and I moved to West Cork. And uh, nine years ago, we collaborated with a number of people to start the Fast Natural Film Festival. Uh, it was just a uh, the idea to screen a few films and uh, we thought of shorts because it was something more manageable. The interesting thing about our area is that Skoll is a small village, uh, originally a fishing village, and um, definitely has no cinema. So <laughs> uh, we started the film festival in a place with no cinema. I'm Pauline, Pauline Carter. I live here in a beautiful village of Skull, which is in the almost the most southerly point of Ireland, southwest of Ireland. The festival started because about almost 10 years next year we will be in our 10th year and it started because we were hitting that slump financially. The village was going to really die a death. So we, I came up with an idea. I used to run a video shop as well and the kids, I used to run a place for children and they used to show me what they were doing with their cameras and whatnot and I was saying, my god, I said, you can make a film with anything these days. And then Sort of, sort of thought of a film festival, but then they said, Gee, we've no cinema. But then we said, no, we'll find the answer to this, and we did. We converted the whole village into a cinema. Maria Petruzzi, who's on the committee, one of the founders, came up with a beautiful slogan, our village is our screen. And that's how it works. So everything that's done in relation to the festival is done in relation to the place. But we're in a beautiful place, and we live literally in a seaside village. And suddenly. The village is unfit. It is actually part of the lives of the local community when the signs go up and when the banners go. And then the cinema signs, the Curzon, the Metropole, the whatever it is, are going up over shops here. So that little powerhouse committee that I happen to be part of as chair is literally something that motors along on the basis of local initiative, local people, just ordinary people wishing that this can happen. So when something is created like this festival and is nurtured through the community, then I'm part of that community as well. Even though my base is Cork and even though I now live down here, I want to do more for this festival. The interest was to bring in good cultural events into a part of the island that was relatively remote. You know, the idea would be always to concentrate this type of events in big cities or kind of big regional centre and uh, um, Skoll is very small, it's a village. But we wanted people to enjoy uh, film and also we wanted to encourage and give uh, an outlet to first time film uh, directors. The challenge of not having a cinema became uh, an interesting challenge and we kind of uh, decided then to create screening possibility and the most interesting way we thought we could do it was to use a number of venues in the village as uh, and turn it into small screening places from the village hall uh, to uh, cafes and uh, set them up as screening possibilities for, for the films. The most unusual we had was a horse box. Was we had a horror we horse box. <laughs> we converted a horse box into this tiny cinema that you had to climb into. I mean, it was the scariest thing yeah. ever, wasn't it? Sit on a bale of hay, hay. And put your yeah. headphones on, and watch <laughs> yeah. um, horror films. So the oh kids were s- the screams and roars yes. coming out of it. Another year we did one in the horse box, and it was a coal That's mine. Right. Yes. So you climbed into the coal mine, and it was a specific. Oh short that was made yeah. about coal mining it was an mm. animated film so uh, also the bus we had? we've had the bus we've had army tents we've had we? army tents we've had the smallest cinema in the world yes. which just looked a little tiny miniature cinema and off from us is long island where we have screenings in the small little attached small kind of old famine cottage and people go across in that boat to it. It takes 10 minutes by ferry, and the ferryman lets us use his bedroom, which is converted into an underwater cinema, yeah, isn't that? Something With else. Nets. It's just amazing. More seater cinema. And it's the first yeah. thing that sells. Everybody wants a ticket for that, but there's only 24 lucky people you in get each to go. screening. And you get off the boat, and you walk up, and 
you're greeted by the people that own the house and you sit in the sitting room and you watch 10 films it's 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 lovely it's really charming you know i think that's my favorite venue Every available mm. space is used. And I think when there's not films on, there are workshops for people coming, uh, mm. uh, young actors, uh, filmmakers, people interested in music and film. Um, you know, it, uh, I went to qu uh, quite a few sort of workshops last time I was here last year, and I found it really interesting. I think the uniqueness of it is that you can walk down the street and you can meet an Oscar-nominated, an Oscar-winning director, and there's no pomp and ceremony about it. He's not surrounded by um, bodyguards or whatnot. He's willing to talk to the young. He or she is willing to talk to the young film submitters and filmmakers. And I love that. I love the fact that they impart of their genius to the young, the young upcoming geniuses. All the, all the good stories and the meeting the people and socialising happens in between screenings, but it really happens at the evening time in the village. And you'll notice at the weekend, the village really comes to life. Friday night, a lot of people come down after they finish work for a week. And the Friday and Saturday night, the street is full of people having the chats, having a few drinks. And that's where, that's where people meet filmmakers. And, and you know, sometimes they make, make people that they're going to work with for, for a long time. You know, you never know the relationships that you connect with on the street in Skull. You know, here you are, West Cork, down by the sea, and uh, and you can meet people like Stephen Freer, Steve Coogan, um, uh, David Putnam. You know, um, Chris O'Dell. It's just it's unbelievable the people who are here. I think one of my favorite memories would be transition year. It was my second year involved with the festival, but my first year working. Um, the band Icarumba played in O'Regan's and it was closing night I think and everybody they, they of course West Cork is filled with incredible musicians um, and ta really talented artists and there was a gig on in the um, hotel in the palace um, the winning films have been awarded and then everybody went into town and you had people like Jim Sheridan socialising with first year students in Cork UCC and it was really nice just to see everybody around and enjoying that vibe but in such a tiny little space of a village and it was to this day I still say it was one of the best nights I've had because it was such a community involvement in such a great celebration it was it was really fun our favorite part is at the very end and we stand back and we go oh my god we did it I can't think of believe it we did it but then the worst part is you turn around and you say we have to do it all again next year <laughs> So you go, oh God, we're not doing it next year, but we do, every year.